Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Covering both sides of the big issues with the analysis you trust on News Radio 1040 WHO. There's two ways we arrive at topics to talk about on this show. Of course, we talk a lot about what's going on in the news this morning. President Biden getting ready to sign an executive order regarding student loan debt. And then there are just articles I come by and I'm reading them and I'm like, okay, that's fascinating. And this segment is item number two, which is there's a new article out that says that there is a new study that finds that hugs help reduce some people reduce stress. Some people reduce stress. Though some people are women. I'm fascinated by that. And here is licensed clinical social worker with Connections Wellness Group. His name is Brian Dunn, and I asked Brian to come on and uh, talk to me about this. Brian, welcome back to Iowa Radio. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Jeff. Thanks for having me back again. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah I, I love talking to you about these topics, Brian. So basically, what does this study say? Okay, so, you know, the interesting thing about this is, have you ever seen the video of the guy in New York or Chicago and he's standing on the street corner with a big sign that says free hugs? Yes. Have you ever seen that? And, they, and countless strangers come up and, and whether they're men or women, I didn't see any uh, discretion there between it being men or women, just the fact that people somehow have this appreciation for physical touch. And the studies that I've read don't really differentiate male and female as much as they talk about uh, what's going on chemically in the body when we do have physical touch. The need for physical touch has a lot of great physiological benefits. So is, are, do women have a physiological reaction, Brian, and men don't? Is that what ultimately the study is saying? I, I would ultimately say that unless, unless they are physiologically made up differently, than than men, which is uh, I don't believe is possible. I think that we have the same chemistry <laughs> in our brains and body, right? Now you you right. may find that uh, there is unwanted, you know, or uncomfortable <laughs> levels of touch, obviously, and maybe guys uh, find this to be where they have contact sports and they're accomplishing the same thing. But we're all born out of uh, uh, in in utero, and we're developing these things in our in our brain and our body. As soon as a baby exits the womb and has made contact with the mother, there's that skin-to-skin contact. And that's, that chemical that is released in the baby and the mother is oxytocin. This elevates pleasurable sensation and neurological <clears throat> and physiological chemistry in the body. So there is a mapping in all of us, doesn't matter if you're male or female, that has a benefit to and a neurological increase and uh, benefit to having physical touch. So, Brian, now I'm going to ask you a question. It's kind of tongue-in-cheek, but, you know, I I agree with you that we all benefit from hugs, but guys always like, we don't like to admit that. So we've invented sort of the bro hug, you know, like the bro hug where we like bang into each other and pound each other on the back. But that's our just our way, isn't it? Like, you know, look, I really would like a hug, but I don't know if it's such a guy thing. But ultimately, we benefit from it, too, don't we? Absolutely. I think that's a very good observation. I think we find ways to have that physical contact that's maybe more, you know, socially acceptable. There's no stigma with it. But at the end of the day, those rules don't apply when I've raised my son. I had no problem, yeah. you know, or, or hugging my dad, right, So, or, or my own brother. So I just feel like it really depends on the content of the culture where you're at and how you're raised. But at the end of the day, um, hugs, they say, and they said on some of these other studies, and even self-soothing touch, where a person puts a hand over their heart, maybe on their belly or on their face, these mm-hmm. sometimes they might be in a place where they're not around others and they don't have the ability to do that. But there are ways that we can teach people. We're teaching our clients how to build resilience at connections, and, and we're teaching them how to deal with stress. And, and the primary objective, obviously, is, identifying triggers to stress, but teaching coping strategies and tactile stimulation is what we're talking about. This is connected to uh, reducing cortisol and uh, things that are our arousal responses in the brain. So there's, there's benefits here for everybody. 
Well, and that's so interesting, Brian, because your answers got me thinking about my friend. We all have friends. We call them huggers. Like, you know, they go through the day hugging everybody. And if you see them, they're going to hug you. I mean, that means that there's uh, a repeated positive response in their bodies to all of this, and it makes them happier people, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, that that's true. I mean, I would, I would uh, probably identify myself as kind of a hugger. And you know there are people that are wired differently. They're they're the more physical contact folks, and then I have come across people that are a little bit more resistant. And you always wonder about that, and where are they finding their, yeah. you know, uh, the the benefits in some other facet. I think that's a I think that's a good point too. You got to find it then somewhere else if you're not going to do it through hugging. But there are people like that. Licensed clinical social worker Brian Dunn is with Connections Wellness Groups. I was I was fascinated by this conversation, Brian. Thanks very much for talking to me.